Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the risk and regulation channel of PwC. My name is Martin Eisen. I'm a partner with PwC and I am your host for today. The risk and regulation channel is a new format that we set up because of your feedback from the risk and regulation channel that we did already in November and December last year with a focus on the CR3 publication. And because of your positive feedback, we thought we do it now on a regular basis and we also broaden the scope of this risk and regulation news channel. So from now on, we will talk about the whole scope of risk management, no matter if it's credit risk, market risk, operational risk, we will talk about prudential regulation, everything around capital management, RWA calculation, we will talk about trading and treasury, risk data and um, risk governance. We will talk, of course, also about ESG and climate risk. And I hope that you enjoy with us the upcoming uh, shows. Today, I would like to speak with you about a recent report published by the ECB. It's the so-called SREP report. And I'm not discussing that alone. I have two international experts today with me. The first one is Gregory Yos from our Brussels office. Gregory, welcome to the show. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Hello, Martin, and hello for, to all the participants, and, and thank you for having me today. Uh, so my name is Gregorios. I'm responsible for financial services practice uh, here in, uh, in Brussels, uh, and my focus is on regulation and supervision uh, in banks. Thank you very much, Gregory, for joining today. And the second international uh, uh, expert that we have today with us is Stefan Röth from the Frankfurt office. Stefan, welcome. Would Hi, you like Martin. to introduce yourself? Yeah, happy to do so. Hello, everyone. Uh, glad to be here today. My name is Stefan Röth. I'm working in the Risk and Regulation Department of PwC here in Frankfurt, and I'm really looking forward to today's session on the SREP results. Thank you, Stefan, for being here. Gregory, let's start. Um, before we go into the details of the SREP report of the ECB for 2021, maybe you can give our viewers an overview about what the SREP process actually is. No, absolutely, Martin. Well, m maybe first of all, uh, start with SREP itself. And that's one, one of those acronyms uh, which we use uh, a lot. Uh, but in fact, it stands for the Supervisory Review and Evaluation Process. It is one of, of the main uh, tools used by, uh, by supervisors. And it's part of the Basel uh, framework uh, for supervision of, uh, of banks. That framework is composed of, of three different pillars. The first pillar is the pillar uh, which will define the capital requirements um, for the banks, uh, which is a, a more mechanical, mathematical approach uh, towards uh, risks and capital. Um, the second pillar um, will look at um, the broader context. Uh, we'll look at the activities of the bank, we'll look at broader risks, and we'll also look at how those risks are being managed. Uh, and that's where the SREP plays a key, uh, a key role in um, that uh, second pillar of, uh, of the Basel uh, framework. The um, way the ECB will perform the SREP uh, is, is uh, defined in a number of, uh, of guidelines. Uh, there is, uh, first of all, uh, the EBA, uh, the European Banking Authority, uh, has issued a number of guidelines. Uh, it's a, a, a book of, of more than uh, 200 pages uh, explaining uh, how the different supervisors uh, should deal uh, with this. And in fact, uh, the way it is organized is that the ECB will look at four different domains. Uh, first of all, um, the business model. Uh, so the ECB will assess the viability and sustainability of the business model of the banks. That's where the ECB is really interacting with the strategy of the banks. Secondly, uh, they will look at governance and risk uh, management. That's a domain where banks have evolved uh, a lot over the past years. Uh, so we've seen a lot of improvements in that domain, but it's also the domain where the ECB has increased the bar year after year, uh, and they continue uh, to further increase the bar and the requirements um, in that area. The third domain uh, is risk and capital. Huh? So what are the different risks of the bank and, and how much capital does the bank have uh, in order to cover for those risks? And the fourth uh, domain um, is liquidity uh, with respect 
uh, to risks. Uh, so what are the risks and what is the liquidity funding in order to manage uh, those risks? So that's the overall uh, approach of, uh, of the strap. Uh, the four domains which will be uh, assessed and at the end of the process, the ECB comes with the final assessment of uh, Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gregory, uh, for this first overview. It seems like that it's a very intensive process and it seems like that the ECB is looking really with a magnifying glass to all the risk management and governance processes of the banks. Um, so how often does this SREP process take place when it's so intensive? Well, in, 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 in fact, it's on a continuous basis. Huh? So um, the, um, the ECB um, has a lot of, of supervisory tasks. They perform inspections uh, and uh, they have a yearly cycle. Huh? And, and each year, uh, at the end of the year, they will come up with um, the SREP uh, letter. Huh? So that's a big moment uh, for the ECB, but also for, for, for the banks uh, when the SREP letter uh, comes out. And uh, that will, in fact, be the result of all the activities of the ECB uh, during the year. It's only during the COVID-19 crisis in 2020 that we had a slightly different uh, approach to this. Oh, thank you very much, Gregory. Um, you mentioned something very important, and that is the SREP letter. And I heard that in this SREP letter, it includes both quantitative and qualitative requirements or measures from the ECB. Could you say a few words about that? Yeah, no, no, of course. First of all, maybe uh, important to say that when I mentioned uh, those four different uh, domains, business model, governance and risk management, um, capital and, and, uh, and risks, uh, liquidity and risks, for each of those four domains, the ECB will come up with a score, a score from one to four. One, you are best in class, uh, for uh, you, you are really bad, uh, and, and that's where you really don't want uh, to be. Uh, by the way, uh, a one score uh, will, will uh, uh, not a lot uh, be uh, be given. Um, so that's for each of the four domains, and then there will also be an overall score, also from one uh, to four. In addition to that, the outcome of uh, of the strap letter um, will lead to a certain level of capital requirements. Uh, so I mentioned that we have pillar one, uh, which uh, is the mechanical uh, capital requirements. Well, in the SREP process, the ECB will come up with additional capital requirements in addition to uh, the pillar one capital requirements. We call them the P2R, the pillar two uh, requirements. In addition to capital, the ECB can indeed impose additional quantitative uh, measures for example, uh, if liquidity um, management uh, is not good, if there are certain issues uh, at, uh, in that domain, the ECB can impose a higher LCR. The LCR is the liquidity coverage ratio, uh, which is the main ratio used to measure the liquidity of, uh, of the banks. In addition to those quantitative requirements, the ECB can and will, in a lot of cases, come up with qualitative requirements in uh, the four domains uh, which I mentioned, where they will ask banks to take specific measures. For example, to increase um, the uh, level of uh, governance in a certain domain, um, to improve uh, credit risk uh, management, uh, to improve their business model, uh, certain areas which are not profitable, which should become more profitable, and so on and so on. Thank you very much, uh, Gregory. I have now a first question for you, Stefan. Um, Gregory mentioned before that um, this year in 2021, there was a full cycle strap, while in 2020, there was a more pragmatic approach and some relief measures uh, because of the Corona crisis. Could you say a few words of what is the difference between 2020 and 2021? Yes, happy to do so. And uh, as you already mentioned, the ECB termed the 
2020 SREP a pragmatic approach that was of course due to the COVID crisis. Uh, obviously on-site inspections were not possible with everybody in the home office and also the ECB was reluctant to hassle the banks too much when they were actually fighting the pandemic and therefore in 2020 the SREP scores basically remained where they were uh, so at the end of 2019 and the ECB only reacted in those cases where there was an urgent need for the supervisor to become active where there were significant changes at banks that needed to be taken care of. Um, Apart from that, as I said, the 2020 score was identical to the 2019 one and only now in 2021 a full SREP cycle was performed once again, the results of which have now been published. So thank you very much, Stefan. Um, so we tease that now already uh, quite often the results of the SREP report 2021. So please, uh, could you give us an overview of what the results actually were? Yeah, I hope I won't disappoint you right now uh, because the results overall, when you look at the capital requirements, do not show these huge changes that one might have expected. Um, so, for example, uh, when you look at the overall capital requirements, they increased from 14.9 to 15.1 percent, so really not very much. And uh, also, when you look at the overall SREP scores, you see, um, well, let's say marginal changes. You can see a uh, move from score two in the direction of score three, so banks are getting a little bit uh, worse over time, uh, no longer as good able to fulfill the ECB's expectations, but there is almost no movement in scores one and four, so it's really not like a, a dramatic result. And this is, I think, mainly due to the fact that the huge impact of the COVID-19 pandemic that uh, we all were afraid of uh, did not yet materialize and uh, therefore shows the banking sector to be still quite quite strong within the EU. Thank you very much, Stefan, for this first overview. And I can tell you already that we will go much more into detail in upcoming episodes of this risk and regulation news channel, where we look at each of the domains that Gregory mentioned and what the outcome of each of the scores um, were. But before we come to the end for today, Stefan, um, the ECB is not only looking backwards to the past, it's always looking into the future. So what are the future expectations of the ECB? ECB. Yes, indeed. The uh, ECB also published as part of the SREP results an outlook to uh, risks that may emerge in the future. And uh, most of these risks should be quite well known from the ECB supervisory priorities that have also been published at the end of last year. So we are talking here about, for example, ESG and climate risk. We are talking here about cyber risk and operational resilience. However, due to the fact that the uh, SREP results have been published by the beginning of February, the ECB did miss one important risk that has now come to, to dominate the agenda, and that is, of course, the crisis in Ukraine. And that will surely also have an impact on the 2022 SREP. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan. Gregory, um, what do you think? Uh, as Stefan mentioned, um, the Ukraine crisis is not part of the SREP 2021 outcome, of course not. What do you think? What will be the impact on the SREP during this year? Will there be big changes? Will there be additional capital requirements? Maybe also limitations regarding dividend payments? What do you expect? No. No, no, very good question, uh, Martin. And, and, and of course, at this stage, uh, difficult to answer. Uh, the first focus will be on the direct exposures of banks uh, towards, on one hand, uh, Ukraine and, 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 and Russia and, and, uh, and businesses uh, and individuals uh, active there. Um, but then uh, on the financial risk side, very rapidly, um, banks, but also the ECB will start to look at the, the derived uh, effects of the crisis, the impact um, on uh, corporates uh, active in, in, in other countries and, and which have uh, important uh, trade relationships uh, with Russia and, uh, and Ukraine, the impact of the, on the increase of uh, energy prices, the impact on the increase of raw materials, uh, the impact of the increase in inflation uh, and so on and so on. All those elements uh, will probably trigger um, um, second level uh, effects, which can have 
uh, financial impacts uh, on, on the economy as a whole uh, and so uh, on the banks. The other aspect uh, which we've been talking about uh, in the past days is cyber risk uh, and, 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 and there um, all banks uh, are uh, looking uh, at that and, and also supervisors um, uh, are more uh, attentive uh, to uh, cyber risks and, and well operational resilience uh, as a whole. Um, so it will certainly uh, be an attention point in, in the next weeks and, and, and months and everything will I think also depends on, on how the crisis further evolves uh, and the impact it will have on our overall economy. Thank you very much, Gregory. Thank you very much, Stefan, for joining me on this first edition of the Risk and Regulation News Channel. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and giving a first overview about the SREP process in 2021. I hope you enjoyed our first episode. As I mentioned before, the next episodes will go a little bit more into detail of the SREP report and I hope you will join us again. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye. See you soon.